I made this video, or excuse me, this diagram to show you all the components that are related to the fuel delivery system. Starting from the tank at the very bottom right, that DAVCO 233 pulls vacuum from the tank, and all it does is it filter, it's the primary filter water separator that basically filter out at a, I think it's about 20 microns or maybe 30 micron filter. Um, there's a drain plug at the very bottom of that uh, DAVCO 223 that you just pretty much open up to drain out any excessive water that might uh, accumulate. From there, it's going to go to the lift pump. I put a little octagon, I guess that's what that is. The lift pump, like I said before, is driven from the motor, from the who, sorry, it's driven from off the front of the Huey pump, which is connected to the motor. That provides the pump action to draw the fuel, in this case diesel, from the tank to the filter before pressurizing to go to the secondary filter. The secondary filter, as you see right there, and I got the cat part number in orange. Actually, all, all the part numbers here are all in orange. That's your cat secondary filter. That fuel is filterized and then it's brought into the head. This is where the Huey pump is pretty much hammering the diesel through the injectors to raise the firing uh, pressure per se. That fuel is basically sent through all six injectors. And at the very back of the head, that's where that regulator will go. And that regulator regulates the fuel that's returned back to the tank. That's pretty much the whole life in the flow of a CAT C7 and the fuel that's brought to be fired within the engine. So I hope this video will help you. Um, I'll list all the part numbers in the, in, the, in the video descriptions and where I purchased these items at. Okay, back to the Freightliner. This is a snap-on fuel pressure gauge. We're gonna basically take a reading. You follow this line. We're gonna take a reading out to our uh, copy check port at the very top of the base of our CAT of secondary filter. I have adapter that's placed on there. And basically, we're gonna to look to see just how much pressure is being built from the base of the lift pump. So as we discussed earlier, fuel comes in through the primary filter where it's filtered. There's a vacuum that goes from the outlet of this DAVCO 233 that goes to the lift pump. You can't really see it here, but the lift pump is actually back over there. The lift pump is mounted to the front of the uh, Huey pump. And that drives the, the first stage as far as bringing fuel in to be pressurized to go into the, into the engine. So we need to take a reading here. So let me see if I can get this truck started and we'll see what happens. Come in inside, but this is the reg fuel regulator. I might probably do a second part video. I'm gonna go ahead and change it just to put a new one on there because I do have it. Uh, the cost was from Walmart, it was $42. This is the part number up here. Um, you can go to the cat dealer, they will have it. Freightliner, they didn't have this, this thing in stock, 
and I had to order it. And the guy never gave me a price, but knowing the dealer, they're going to probably be tack on another $10, $15, $20 probably. So the best thing is just get this thing either at Cat, Walmart, Rock Auto maybe. Um, $36 to about $45 is the average price. Um, I did go down to Napa. They didn't have it in stock either. They said they could order it, but I just went to Walmart. I'm trying to maximize some of my Walmart rewards. But um, this would be the last thing that you would want to stall if you suspect uh, any fuel issues. Unless there is a bad or misfiring injector, which we'll later on dive deeper into this truck and see what happens. So I hope this video is helpful for some people. Okay, so it was just too loud to talk with the motor running. So pretty much we got about 70 PSI on the gauge at the compu check. So that should be more than adequate pressure. We know the lift pump is working and pretty much everything is uh, tested out pretty good on this, this CAT engine. Uh, as usual, when you're always using these types of pumps, you want to go ahead and bleed off any excess fuel uh, before before you disengage any kind of a uh, checking mechanism and um this is just a quick video about just working on a cat uh c7 six cylinder straight inline diesel and just the checks you do when you buy a used truck and if you suspect any kind of fuel issues or fuel delivery problems these are the steps i do as far as changing filters um what I didn't do, and uh, I'll show you a package on this DAVCO 233. There's a new filter element. Uh, I bought a new uh, bowl because the bowl that was on there was pretty much uh, dirty and you couldn't really see nothing in there. There is a check valve. You can't really see it from here, but the inlet fuel line, there's a check valve that keeps uh, fuel from basically going back into the tank. Um, so it's like a one-way check valve. If you have hard start uh, issues with your cat engines, you might want to go ahead and replace that check valve and add a new check valve. So again, we change the primary filter. Let's see if I can get up in there. We also change our secondary cat filter. I also end up um, flushing out the diesel tank just for any kind of re uh, residual elements, dirt, debris that might be in a tank. I only did the passenger, I'm sorry, I only did the driver's side tank. So on this freight liner, you're not gonna be able to see this, but at the very bottom of this tank, about just around, uh, let me see if I can get up in there. Just around the, the tank holding element, there is a drain plug. You would need like a, a socket with a hex head Allen head, excuse me, and he's just going to remove that plug. Eventually, I'm going to go ahead and buy some locking uh, gas caps. Um, just so nobody can mess with your gas. And if you look up in there, you'll see the Dorman new fuel sender element that I installed. To, do, to install that, you need to take this panel off to give you room access. I struggle with these, these screws. I didn't feel like messing with them. So I just stuck my hand up in there and just did it from the back. But if you want to really get into it and clean everything on the top of the tank, you would take the access panel off and just go ahead and uh, do all your, your maintenance from there. I uh, hope that helps out anybody that ended up buying a M2 Freightliner. And anybody that might have problems or think they have problems with fuel, these are just the basic checks you would do on this type of engine. Have a good day. And these are the miscellaneous parts that you might want to go ahead and purchase. This here was the DAVCO fuel bowl cover. Like I said, the one that was on here was pretty much uh, just dirty and you couldn't really see nothing out of it. And if you ever want to work on your DAVCO 233, um, the only thing that pretty much goes out is this stupid check valve. This is the part number here. Um, so you can, you can out, always go out and buy this part or repair kit. Um, and then you'll get these little components, which is pretty much nothing but a check valve, one-way check valve. 
Um, Freightliner locally, give you a hint, Davco actually has a repair kit for this that comes with the cover, it comes with the screw cap, the spring, and the check valve. Because if you buy all the pieces separately, you pay more money. Freightliner didn't have it, but I went ahead and just bought this stuff at Freightliner. But in the future, if like you wasn't crunch on time, go go list go get the Dafco repair kit or overhaul kit. I think that's what actually what it's called, overhaul kit. And that will give you the cover, the cap, the spring, and the check valve if you want to replace all that stuff. So pretty much, I think I paid about, for the cover, I think I paid about $37. The check valve, I think, was also around like $30 or $27. So that's the check valve that was uh, purchased. And that's the cover. And I'll give you the DAFCO sheet. Uh, the 243, 233, and all the other various formats of the DAFCO water filter separator are all built about the same way they have similar uh components they might just be bigger they have some that have a fuel heating element like for the cold and northern people up in canada for example uh but it, pretty much for the most part all of them are done the same way they're rebuilt the same way